Thank you, Steve. Uh, appreciate all you guys being out there today for the start of spring practice. It was a good start for us. Apologize for the weather and apologize that Steve made y'all stand down there in the shade where there was no sunlight and you had to freeze. We got to talk about their viewing areas uh, better so they're not cold down there as well. But a lot of energy out there today. I think uh, all of our players, uh, coaches, staff had a great spring break. It was good to get away for uh, a little bit of time and then to be able to uh, get back at it. So obviously there was a ton of energy coming off spring break and um, and being back out there on the field. I thought for a first day it was it was good. There's a lot of first days that I've been a part of that are you know sloppy with pre-snap penalties and can't get the snap and stuff like that. We did we did not have that. Thought it was very very clean. Obviously a lot of work to do, but uh, good to finally be back out there on the field and and run around. Uh, with those guys as well. I think our guys are in great shape. That showed, you know, today. I think it was the first day of spring practice last year. We had two or three guys that had uh, suffered some hamstring uh, injuries that really kept them out the rest of spring practice. And um, unless I miss something, I don't think we had a single injury issue that popped up today as well. So that's a credit to our players, credit to Luke Day and, and his staff. They did a great job in the month of January, months of January and February from a, uh, a winter workout, winter program standpoint to get stronger, which we did, and then also to be in shape. Uh, a little bit uh, or be a little bit better prepared for spring practice as well. We did a little bit more running as a team in January and February this year than we did previous years and think it showed uh, showed today as well. You know, going back to the offseason program, looking at some results of what we had, our average uh, bench press on the football team uh, uh, improved by 34 pounds was the average uh, for all of our players as well. We had 56 of our guys hit new top speeds uh, so we felt we got faster as a football team uh, this offseason as well and made gains and all the other uh, um, uh, me metrics that we test in the weight room as well so proud of our guys and how they work down there in the weight room the last two months and then proud of them with the way they performed out there on the field today so a lot of work to do but excited about getting started as well and uh, also to, speaking of getting started wanted to wish coach Staley and her team good luck this week as they uh, get started on the uh, uh, in the NCAA tournament and uh, going and, and winning another championship as well so need to get six more wins uh, as well. So we'll be cheering hard for them uh, like all Gamecocks are. So questions that y'all have? Shane, I know that, you know, installing a new offense is going to be a whole thing, maybe even through the season, but specifically because you have such limited running backs, what do you have to kind of hold back from putting it in the spring to say you got to wait maybe until more personnel gets in? <laughs> Not a lot, really, to be honest with you, Dave. I mean, scheme-wise, nothing really would, would change. Are there things that uh, maybe are a little bit better suited for bigger backs, if you will, sure. Uh, but, you know, we feel like with all the running backs that we have right now that they can do everything that we want to do from a schematic schematic standpoint. So so not a mu not much what, what you got to do. And it's not just at running back, but there's some other positions where we're a little bit thin numbers-wise. So you just got to be smart about how much you're asking guys to do and things like that as well. We've got to be very cognizant of that. But, no, we're, we're trying to throw uh, as much at them right now Let's figure out what we're good at offensively, defensively, and special teams and, and continue to narrow down on that as we go through spring practice and, and into the season. Shane, after one day of practice, are you able to share a two deep anything like that in terms of who's going to start game one against North Carolina? I'm sure you guys, when we did a couple of the things at the beginning of practice, I'm sure you guys were writing and tweeting feverishly when you saw who went out with the first group and second group and all that as well. Not really, but I'll tell you, Colin, exactly what I told the team this morning at 7.30 a.m. in our team meeting. There is no depth chart right now. There's a there's a group that went out there today first primarily by because of experience and who were the returning guys. Um, and after that, it's we talk about competition in this program all the time. After that, it's all about what uh, they do. So we're evaluating everything, and that depth chart will constantly, constantly change. And there's a lot of really good, uh, a lot of competition at all positions, but quite a few, a few you know in particular that I think uh, will be really uh, uh, good battles here this spring. And we saw to carry on taking the working a little bit with the running backs there. Have you talked to him about what his role might look like, and is that something you could foresee coming through spring and then into fall camp? I think to carry on is a not think I know that to carry on is a guy that 
uh, good things happen when the ball is in his hands, whether it's running it, catching it, throwing it. There's a lot of different things that we can do with him. So one, you know, to carry on being able to do some stuff at, at running back um, is uh, the, kind of the next step of some of the things we did with him last year, playing some quarterback and the year before uh, also playing receiver. So he's still a receiver. Uh, he was doing some things at running back uh, uh, today as well. And with him, we've kind of told him it's, 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 it's his uh, – We'll go at his pace. You know, I met with him about a month ago, just trying to figure out all the different ways we can get you on the field. And he knows running, or he knows receiver. He's been doing that since I've been the head football coach here. Let's experiment a little bit with you just getting natural at being able to play, you know, some running back as well. And and I think it'll, you know, present problems for, you know, defenses uh, as well, because here's a guy that can line up at quarterback. Here's a guy that can line up at receiver. Here's a guy that can line up at running back. And uh, just continuing to try and find ways to, to get him the ball. So he is a receiver. He'll continue to work at some quarterback, but this is just something that we just wanted to um, experiment with a little bit, which can help us as we go into the season. And goes back to David's question. I mean, we're very limited, as you guys know, at running back right now. So it gives us another body in that room and some experience in that room as well, because that's a young group. Uh, you mentioned some positions. Center is one. You're going to have a big pull to fill with Eric going. Kind of how you feeling about that now? And I think we saw Vershawn taking some snaps there. Where is the center position right now? So y'all were analyzing the depth chart and where guys were and stuff like that as well. Uh, center is something that really we go back to last season was a concern. I mean, I can remember sitting here in spring practice last season saying, who the heck's going to be our starting center? in 2023 and we better start working some guys because Hank Manos and Eric Douglas are, are graduating. Javon Gwynn is graduating. And uh, so that's something that we've been pr preparing for since last year. Uh, Vershawn and, and uh, Nick are the two guys that are primarily working there as well. But we've got other guys that have been doing things at center as well. So you can, you can never have too many of those guys um, that can obviously – make the calls that you have to make at the center position, direct traffic for the offense, and then be able to uh, snap the ball to the quarterback as well. So we're trying to develop as many as we can, but Nick and uh, Nick and Vershawn are kind of the two top guys there as we go into day one. Shane, as we overanalyze, you mentioned with the depth charts a little bit, uh, seeing Stone Blanton out there. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are very high on him, especially towards the end of the last season. Mm -hmm. We saw that snap count went up after that Vanderbilt game in particular. What has he done over the last couple months to really elevate his game, to put him in a situation where he is competing for a starting role this year? Yeah, no, he's uh, he's somebody I'm really proud of, and we had high hopes for him when we signed him. He did some good things last year as a true freshman, and we have high continue to have high hopes for as we go into the uh, 2023 and beyond. Uh, one, football is very important to him. He's really, really smart. I mean, it seemed like last year when he got here and we started preseason practice, I don't know if he ever left the building in the month of August. Some, you know, there's stories of him like sleeping up here at night and not even taking time to go back to the dorm because he just wanted to maximize his time in the facility watching tape and things like that. Um, he, he's, he's a really good baseball player. He's not playing baseball this spring, so he could get healthy and focus on football. And then he's all the, the things that I talked about in the weight room, Mike, that so many of our guys have done, he's right at the top of it with what he did from a – he's got uh, getting stronger – uh, leaning out a little bit, getting faster. He'll be the first to tell you that he needed to work on his speed and, and feel like he has, you know. So with Mo Caba not – with Sherrod and Brad being gone, Mo Caba not practicing right now and are not being fully cleared, it's a great opportunity for him to, uh, to jump in there and try and uh, seize a role at the linebacker position. I don't know I want to say done. Um, Right now, you know, Stone battled a little bit of a shoulder injury last year, so I think the baseball part of it for him was just getting healthy for one. Let's focus on football early. And, and Coach Kingston and I have had conversations about Stone, and, and Stone and I have been talking about baseball, you know, all throughout last football season as well in regards to what he wanted to do. So uh, he's, uh, he's talented at baseball. Um, he's really good at football. And, um, you know, I think he's – I think his passion right now is golf. He was telling me about his new clubs he got over spring break. So I think the golf is kind of maybe overtaking baseball in his mind too. <laughs> Half joking on that. So <laughs> he did get new clubs though. Coach uh, Lavasier Carroll was out there today. What's his role? Um, 
going forward and obviously not playing, but uh, what's that conversation like when he comes in and you have to talk to him about ending his career and stuff like that? How, yeah. how tough is that? It's tough, and I screwed that up before the last time we met. I should have mentioned Lavoisier. It totally slipped my mind. Um, his status, I should have mentioned that to you guys. I know he put something out on social media. Hate it for him. Um, uh, that uh, That's not an easy conversation to have, so it's something that we have been looking at and, and – and and evaluating and doctors came to the determination that it would be best for him not to continue to play so that was a uh, certainly a hard conversation any any competitor or any athlete no matter what the sport hates to get told that it's ending and not on their terms of when you want your career to end so I'm myself and and uh, Clint Haggard our head trainer met with him down in Clint's office and and I told Lavoisier that day that just because he's not playing on Saturdays doesn't mean that his role on the football team is any different. He's still a valuable member of the football team, and he's handled it great. You know, it'd be very easy for a lot of guys to just disappear and go into a shell. I mean, he I don't think he's missed a single workout, team activity, anything since he found out that he wasn't going to be able to uh, continue to play. He's still an active guy on this team and I want him involved in, in everything that, that he can be. And he was out there today and, and very active and, and you know, I hate that his football career has ended, but he's a great representative of our, of our program. A lot of people think a lot of him and, and we're here to support him in any way uh, going forward. When you're installing a new offense like you guys are this spring, what, what's the approach? Do you throw a lot at him and see what sticks or do you guys try to find just a couple things that work early on? How, how do you guys approach that? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And um, I think there's different thought processes to that. And I've been a part of both of places that I've been. Our mentality right now is throw as much at them um, as we can. And let's figure out not so much what sticks, but let's really challenge the players and coaches mentally uh, and, and having to learn what we're doing. And uh, but then also let's see what we're good at. You know, let's throw everything at them this spring, particularly early on. And as we realize, you know, we develop our personnel and we see what we do best, kind of narrow down what we're doing. And there's there's quite a bit of new um, from last year, Hale, and there's a lot of carryover from last year as well. You know, it's kind of a mix, probably a little bit more new, but there's quite a bit of carryover with some concepts and things like that, terminology, but. We've tried to make it simpler, tried to make it easier to communicate at the line of scrimmage, things like that. Um, but no, we're uh, we're not going in there at a slow pace. I mean, today we threw a lot at them today from an offensive standpoint um, and, and, and made them think. And, and a lot of that we were able to because of the things that we're allowed to do in the months of January and February that we weren't allowed to do previously that the NCAA lets us do. So that helped us going into um, – going into day one, but we'll continue to throw stuff at them. And then as we get through spring, let's figure out what we're best at and really hone in on that. I saw Kaba and Strawn and Spalding all just kind of out there, not fully practicing, but just kind of what's the status on them? Is there any timeline for them kind of getting into full contact and things like that? No, I mean, we're optimistic that as they progress that they'll um, – be able to do some things. I think each of their situations is a little bit different based on when they got hurt, when they had surgery, things like that as well. I wouldn't anticipate with all three of them, uh, any of them really being able to do full speed, 100% cleared before the end of spring practice. But we are, uh, we are optimistic that each of them will be able to do a little bit more each day um, as we go through the spring. Gonna ask about that too, but as far as Dante Miller too, I guess is he his sort of eligibility resolved at this point? I mean, is he good to go? I guess what's kind of his status right now? He's not good to go. Um, it's something that we're still you know working on to get a final determination as well. Um, obviously, there's a process that that um, uh, requires. We're going through the process right now. Nothing has been um, 100% resolved. So right now we're you know, hoping that he'll be able to, uh, to play and be eligible and prepared if he's not able to. <clears throat> Donovan Westmore has seen to be getting some work with the edges today. Just what is that position going to look like in the spring and how big of an opportunity is it for guys like Brian Thomas and Desmond Umizulu in getting those reps? Yeah, it's huge uh, with, you know, Jordan Strawn uh, being out right now and, 
and our depth issues at that position, it's uh, it's critical. Uh, Donovan's a guy that he's a really good football player. Uh, he did some things last year. He was a linebacker all last year, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, he was on the scout team for us for the most part. And there was there was quite a few times last year where we used him as like an edge rusher against certain teams um, to, pre to prepare for the other team. He would play some edge defensive ends. So he, and he did a good job of that rushing the passer. He's got some twitch and some knockback, and he's a really strong young man. Uh, so there's it's a, it was a natural transition for him. Part of it was you know let's take a look at him and see how he best fits out there. And then also part of it was uh, we're thin at that position and we need some guys that can play the edge just so we can practice. Um, and it's it's big for Donovan. It's big for Desmond. It's big for Brian Thomas, Terrell Dawkins, all those guys, Tyreek Johnson, uh, to see who's going to kind of separate themselves at that position. And then who are the guys that we can count on? And do we need to go try and add to that after spring practice those are decisions that we're trying to make as well and then we'll see what's best for donovan he's working at the edge right now but he's uh there's a lot of carryover between that and the linebacker position also where he could always end up back there too hey coach it's year three there's a lot of new faces what's one thing about this group that excites you the most in the early going hmm, good question um i think just uh how hungry they seem and uh, and not satisfied um they're very it's a very you know business-like approach there's not a lot of bs with this group you know they they work they get their work done um there's not a knock on wood there's not a lot of issues outside this building that we're really having to deal with so I, that's what excites me is just the, the hunger the maturity and and uh, we got some great young men in this program and you got older guys that are back for another year that are that are leaders and, and Spencer has kind of taken on a, an even added role from a leadership position and he's taken that and ran with it so that um that excites me and then just all the you guys were out there this morning I mean just all the new faces um not just players but coaches and graduate assistants and analysts I mean there's a lot of a lot of new out there as well and every year is starting over and this year is no different but excited about the group of people but then also their their hunger and their mentality right now hey coach as you can see we've all created our storylines ahead of spring practices but I'm curious <laughs> what do you think the biggest storyline is as spring practice gets underway man um it's a good question. Probably just all the one, the new faces, and um, and uh, you know how do we continue to progress? Are we sitting around patting ourselves on the back last year because we won eight football games and, and finished nationally ranked, and and just assume that that it's going to be the same this year because we got a lot of guys back? Or are we realizing that every year is completely different and this is a completely new team and that we did some good things last year, but there's a lot that we have to get better at. And, um, you know, to me, the storyline is do we continue to attack those things that we have to get better at? And do we continue to get better as a, as a team while we integrate uh, so many new faces into this program? Shane, a lot of times when you sign a freshman quarterback, a lot of folks figured to be an automatic red shirt. Mm -hmm. So with Lenoris, do you guys see a chance for him to get on the field this year? And two, have you maybe talked with him about saying, if we can't get you in the quarterback, we could try you here? Is that a conversation you've had? I haven't, um, honestly. I mean, there's not been a single conversation with Lenoris about being anything but a quarterback, and other than in recruiting, you know, because that question came up in recruiting from, you know, Lenoris and his family. Do you envision him being anything but a quarterback? And I said, one billion percent no I mean he is a quarterback period so if anybody's had that conversation with him it's not me and they're doing it without my knowledge so no he's a quarterback and, and I wouldn't assume anything I mean we want to give every young man an opportunity to uh to play if they're ready to play and can help us like I mentioned a minute ago what the NCAA allows us to do in the in, in the off season, you're able to get guys ready to play a little bit um, easier maybe than in years past and he is He's working his rear end off to try and learn everything that we're doing. Football is really, really important to him. He runs around with Pup Howard all the time, and they are all about football. And um, so he'll do everything in his power to get ready. And at that quarterback position, I mean, there's a lot of quarterbacks 
Obviously, Spencer returns as a starter. Luke Doty's been a starter. And then there's a lot of other guys in there that are battling it out to try and figure out how that quarterback room shakes out. So it's a challenge for us as coaches to get all those guys equal reps and get a good evaluation on all of them. But we've, we've, we haven't told anybody, here's what we think your role is going to be. It's do everything in your power to uh, play this season and, and help us. Shane, you promoted Lonnie Teasley to the full-time mm -hmm. offensive line coach. How, when you made that decision, how big was consistency there for you in terms of scheme and in recruiting? And, and how have you seen him kind of hit the ground running at that position? Yeah, uh, consistency was was certainly big. I wanted the best guy for the job, and I felt like Lonnie's relationship with the offensive line was really, really good. There was consistency from a recruiting standpoint as well. Uh, and then let's not you know forget about the – I wanted Greg Atkins here. I mean, Greg Atkins is one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, and, and I wanted Greg to be here a part of this as well. So, I mean, I made that clear – to both Lonnie and add both that I wanted them both here. And here's where I felt like we needed to go moving forward with Lonnie, you know, taking things over. Um, you know, there's talk of with how, what analysts are allowed to do in practice and from a coaching standpoint, how that roles could change. I was certainly thinking about that uh, when I made that decision. Uh, and then also keep in mind too, Colin, like whoever, whatever I did, um, Dow Loggins needed to feel good about it as well. I mean, most times when an offensive coordinator comes in, if he's going to bring somebody with him, it's usually an offensive line coach that he's got a background with. And he really didn't know Ad or Lonnie. And, um, you know, Dow and I talked about it. We went on a recruiting trip. I think we were out on a plane somewhere and we were on the school plane and it was me, Lonnie and Dow. And I made them sit separately and I got as far away from it as possible on the plane trip just so the two of them could just talk and get to know each other and um Dow felt really good about Lonnie and that that his feelings have only grown I think Dow's really excited about him and uh, Lonnie's fantastic he's he had background as an offensive line coach before he came here as an analyst he had done it before I uh, saw the way that he related with recruits the way that he related with our offensive line and um you know, felt like it would be a really good transition and, and so far, you know, so good. Or so far, so good, yeah. You guys go from just Nate at the Gator Bowl to now you've got eight new guys in the yeah. tight end room. So just how do you manage having that many new faces at one position group? And, you know, have there been any yeah. standouts or surprises from that group so far? No, that's a challenge, too. We, it's a good thing. We've got a lot of quarterbacks, and we're trying to figure out how to get them all reps. And we've got a lot of tight ends that we're trying to get them all reps. And, and it's a really – it's a really cool group um, that we have to work with there. Just uh, hard workers, unique skill sets. You've got uh, athleticism and length. I mean, you guys were out there and watched us practice and play, obviously, last year. That group looks different than what that tight end group last year looked like. They looked like eight real tight ends. Not that what we did had last year wasn't real tight ends. I don't mean to say that, but we had guys that were more of H-back type bodies and things like that. These guys are your more conventional tight ends that are athletic and can run. And, um, you know, I don't know standouts. I mean, I think they all flash today. You've got uh, true freshmen. You've got SEC transfers. You've got uh, a guy and Josh that transferred from Western Kentucky that made a lot of plays at Western Kentucky. So I'm, we're excited about uh, that group and and uh, how they can help us not just on offense but but special teams as well the more of those guys you have those body types the better and, and that's a good group that we have right now Shane you talked about the uh, energy of the players I saw coach Loggins bringing a lot of energy today uh, what kind of effect does that have on players when they see a new coach coming in and getting after it like that I think a lot um, you know that's what we want to be about we talk about positive energy in this program a lot and and I'm sure Dow had a nice, relaxing spring break like we all did, and he was itching to hit the field this morning. You know, that's what we, we love. We love being out on the field. I mean, that's why we do what we do. There's a lot of reasons I coach, but being out there on the field with the players is, is right at the top. So to be able to get back out there on the field was, was awesome. And, and he, he, uh, he is that. He has a lot of energy, and he's shown that since he got here as well in recruiting and in meetings. He's really got a great personality, and he's been a great fit for what we're trying to do here. And, Excited to continue to work with him. Chance saw Pete Jenkins out there working with the mm -hmm. offense, or excuse me, the defensive line. I guess just having a guy like that around at practice, as you just hanging out for a couple of days. And I guess what was that kind of like having a guy like that at, at practice and working with those guys? Yeah, he's um, you know he's been doing it for a long, long time and has a relationship with Jimmy, so he kind of makes uh, his annual 
uh, trek to Columbia. He was here last year, and I want to say he was year, here the year before, maybe in the summertime. But here, you know, he's just uh, – he, he, he arrives and, and spends, you know, two or three days, and you really hardly ever see him. He's, he sits back there in that defensive line meeting room, and it's like his little cubby back there and just works to try and figure out ways to make us better coaches and, and things like that as well. And, and uh, he's worked with a lot of great defensive line coaches and defensive line men uh, over the years and, and happy to be a great guy and happy to have him here. I'm guessing there aren't a lot of specifics you can share about the three guys who are suspended, but can you give any kind of detail or anything about what needs to happen for them to, to get back with the team and kind of where that is? Not really. All that's above my head right now. That's not a decision. That's a university decision, and, and I have bosses, and there's processes that, the processes that those guys uh, go through within the university and outside the university as well. So right now, neither of the three are, are – uh, um, involved in our program and, um, you know, thinking of them and support them and, and here for them. But right now they're not a part of the program. And, and uh, I think what I said a couple weeks ago was don't anticipate them being back with us at any point soon. And, and I stand by that right now. Shane, um, speaking about just Darius Rush and just looking back over the last couple of years, Jalen Foster, Carlos Patel, you just think of the different defensive backs who have really been able to take the opportunities that you guys have given them and been able to run with it. What has it been about with Torian Gray and Clayton White and, and just being able to have these guys pick up a defense so quickly but also be able to grow at the same time so that they can be able to raise their draft stock? Yeah. No, uh, great point. Uh, uh, question, I was just – we had a handful of recruits that were out there today and one of them was a really, really talented defensive back, and I was having that exact same conversation with him about the development of our defensive backs, and it's a testament to Torian Gray. He's the best defensive backs coach in the world, and I have no doubt in my mind about that. And the way that he teaches, <clears throat> the way those guys work, the way that he's been able to develop them, and then give credit to them as well, but uh, just he, he puts a lot of time – into it you know he he really Torian I mean really 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 works at it and uh, to develop his guys and he's got a great connection with them and it's a track record it's not just here it's wherever he's been Virginia Tech Florida you name it coaching in the NFL and and just the way that those guys he co the guys that he coached in the NFL the guys that he coached in college the way they the way they talk about him so he coaches them hard he's really demanding he holds them accountable but uh, we want to bring players in here that are really good, talented, really good uh, players and talented, but we have to develop them. And there's no question in my mind that Torian, with Clayton's leadership, does a great job of, of developing our, all of our defensive backs. Kind of sticking with the player you're losing in the NFL, you're replacing Zach Pickens in the middle. Obviously, Tonka's hurt right now with defensive tackle. Kind of where is that position? Is there anybody working out there who maybe hadn't been last year or in the fall? No. Um, Nobody knew uh, there right now. Yeah, obviously, it's Boogie Huntley's played a lot of football for us, and, and Boogie's kind of the leader of that group, you know, right now, particularly with Tonka being out. And and uh, but then there's young guys that it's time for them to take the next step. Uh, T.J. Sanders, uh, Jamal Weiss, Demetrius Watson, uh, DeAndre Martin. You know, that's. Elijah Davis coming in, you know, we brought him in here for a reason. So those guys are really into a, in a in a battle to see who's gonna who's gonna separate themselves. And I've seen them all in practice the last couple of years, uh, flash and, and show signs. And now it's time. I've told them in the team meeting this morning. Now it's time for them to take that next step. You know, don't just be great in the weight room. It's time to take that weight room and everything else with your development to the field. Uh, also, and um, so we're excited about the next group of those young guys. Tonka and Boogie are kind of the old guys in that room, and then let's see who who, who takes the next step uh, with that younger group. Wow! All right, appreciate you guys. Y'all have a great week. Thank you.